If you set this basic rule, it's going to have a huge, 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 huge impact for the rest of your life, okay? What's up guys, it's John Anthony here from JohnAnthonyLifestyle.com, international dating coach, slept with over a thousand girls in 30 different countries all around the world. Excited to kick off a new set of daily videos, okay? The videos will be released every day at 2 p.m. Eastern time, okay? On the dot, 2 p.m. Eastern, okay? As always, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe below. Okay, so you can get updates about those new videos every day. They're gonna be jam-packed with value. I'm really ramping up uh, production in terms of the amount of value and output that I'm going to be putting out, okay? And if you find value in this video, please subscribe. So the topic today is the three-second rule, okay? So on my live programs, my live boot camps that I teach all around the world, I often start the night by telling guys, you don't wanna wait more than three seconds to approach a, a girl, okay, to approach a stranger. So if you see a girl at a bar, or nightclub, or during the daytime, okay, no more than three seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Okay, and if you do not approach before then, you have failed and violated that rule. Okay, if you set this basic rule, it's going to have a huge, 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 huge impact for the rest of your life. Okay, literally all those situations, right? Like if the, on, on your deathbed, if you could come up with all the situations, there's gonna be countless, okay, in your life where you saw a hot girl in public, okay? For me, it was just yesterday, okay, out on the street. Oh, should I talk to her? Here's the kinds of things that come up if you ignore that three second rule, okay? What if she has a boyfriend? What if she doesn't like me? What if I'm not attractive enough? Okay, what if I'm not her type? What if I'm uh, rejected harshly and then it makes me feel bad and it hurts, bruises my ego? Okay, what if other people notice? What if other people hear? Okay, this is especially, it can be especially more challenging during the daytime. Okay, if I go talk to this girl in the supermarket, all the people around her, since it's quiet, are going to hear. Okay, they're all going to turn and look at me. The attention is going to be on me. Then if I'm rejected or if I'm not her type or whatever, I'm going to be embarrassed to a whole collection of people. Okay, and then I'm going to still have to do my shopping and it's going to be a huge fucking mess, right? And I, can I deal with that, right? What if she doesn't even pay any attention to me? What if she just ignores me? You know, and guys will just sit there and build up excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse, okay? This video here is not about internal game mindsets, okay? There'll be a separate video on that. But a quick look into that topic. You want to always think that you're the shit. You want to always think that you're at 100 out of 100 value. I teach guys in my live courses and in my digital products that your value is at 100 out of 100 and it never moves from there, okay? External events that happen, okay, if a girl rejects you, it doesn't fucking matter, all right? If you take cold approach pickup, um, that's what we're discussing now, but if you, if you took like cold knocking on doors or cold calling, right? Cold knocking, door-to-door -door sales, okay, I did that for a summer to see how it relates to pickup and seduction in the game. And that has a lot of parallels, okay? You learn very quickly that the top salesmen spend most of their day getting rejected, okay? And, I, and I've spent, I've talked about at length in, in various videos on my channel how a realistic close rate at, at my level, okay, I just hit 1,234 girls, and that is an exact count. I take that number very seriously, okay? If you're new to the channel, I talk about the amount of girls you sleep with as being a general objective measure of success to see where you're at in the game, okay? It's not just about racking up big numbers. It can be a, a byproduct of having a very high skill at this game, okay? But you have to take into account other factors. What is the person's age? I'm 36, um, but around 27, I was only at 60, I shouldn't say only. I had been with 64 girls around 27. So in less than 10 years, I tacked on another, now it's 1234, okay? So almost another 1100 girls. 1,200 girls, almost, okay? Um, in a, in a, a decade, okay? So, uh, my point was, is that when I was being trained by the top salesmen, they said, don't be thrown off. Okay, and I already knew the game stuff inside out, the cold approach pickup stuff inside out. But they said, don't be thrown off by a rejection, okay? If someone slams the door in your face, that's fine. The same thing is gonna happen at the club, right? If I approach a girl that's in a bad mood, or she just came to dance and have fun, right? Or she really does have a boyfriend, it doesn't matter if I'm fucking Casanova, okay? Who, 
funnily, uh, interestingly enough, I think funnily is a word, uh, this guy only, I think the number was 143 girls he wrote in his memoir, okay, because we didn't have cell phones and, and taking phone numbers and all that stuff to reconnect with the lead later, to set up a date, to close. But it doesn't matter who you are, if that girl's in a bad mood, you're, she's going to reject you, okay? You can either let that deflate you and you can get out of state, okay? These other companies in the dating niche talk about this concept of state. I have a video where I, and I'll link to it at the end, where I say that state and warming up are a myth, okay? And I take girls home in the first half of the night from a nightclub as much or more than the second half of the night. It's just a different strategy, okay? You should look at every interaction in a vacuum. You should look at it like it doesn't matter how many rejections you had that night prior to this. It doesn't matter how many girls you talked to that night prior to this. It doesn't matter how many girls you talked to that week. Okay, so that meaning I can walk into a nightclub and I'm bringing my A game, my 100% like best self and best version of my skills on that first approach. Okay, so very often I take home the first girl that I talk to or the second girl that I talk to. Okay, or conversely, let's say I have a string of rejections, which still happens because you again there's all these factors out of your control. And I still bring my A game, okay, and then I can take home a hot girl still, okay? Let's say I get rejected five times in a row. I can come to that sixth girl expecting rejection and being like, hey, uh, or I can bring my best self, okay? So that's, that's kind of putting things into perspective. So don't worry about all these negative things. Go in and give your best self, wait three seconds, okay, but no more. Basically, you're conditioning yourself. You see a girl, you go in. You see a girl, you go in, okay? And that's going to really give you a lot more opportunities. Let's say like in a given month you see 100 different girls and you chicken out on all of them, okay? Conversely, let's say you approach all of them, okay? That's gonna funnel down. Based on your skill level, a bunch of those approaches will turn into phone numbers. A bunch of those phone numbers will turn into dates. A bunch of those dates will turn into girls you sleep with. And a bunch of those closes or girls you sleep with will turn into regulars or it's rotation girls or fuck buddies, whatever the term you want to use. Now the reason I want to make this video is because this is an extremely fundamental aspect and cornerstone of the game and cornerstone of cold approach in general. Okay, without getting into any other details of how you should open or which girls you should talk to or anything like this, just make a firm commitment right now, okay? Say to yourself, okay, repeat after me, for the rest of my life, I saw this in a forum way back in the day in the old school forums, and this guy was like, Make the conscious decision right now, not later, not next year, not next week, not tomorrow. Make the conscious decision that you're going to approach a stranger that you see, okay, you know, let's say you're late for work. In that case, you probably wouldn't do it, okay, depending on how hot the girl is. But cir circumstances barring you from not being able to do the approach, right, like let's say she's on a bus and, you know, you're not going to chase the bus down. <laughs> but if you are able to make that approach, then do it, okay? And don't wait any more than three seconds. The, the reason that the, the idea that came to me to make this video, I was watching a movie last night called We're the Millers, okay, from 2013. I'm going to play a brief clip here. But uh, the main character that's like playing as like a, a sub in for this younger guy's dad, he's like teaching him about women. And he's like, if you want to know how to do better with women, when you want to talk to the girl, wait no more than three seconds. When you want to kiss the girl, wait, wait no more than three seconds. That way, you don't have time to build up all this negative shit, okay? Because all this negative self-talk, think of it as handicapping yourself, okay? Think of it as giving you a big disadvantage, okay? So do you want to go in and bring your A-game and have a positive attitude about talking to that stranger? Or do you want to just watch her from across the bar and say, oh, you know, I would talk to her, but maybe she has a boyfriend, maybe people will notice, maybe she'll reject me, maybe I won't know what to say, you know, and, and so on and so forth and so on and so forth, okay? Now, this three second rule, depending on how strict you are with holding yourself to that, what I've seen from clients is guys, even during the live programs, and this is extremely frustrating, will be at a shopping mall, for instance, or, or on the street or whatever, because the daytime approaches are even more particularly scary and a really hot girl be coming by, and I'll say, hey, you, open that girl, all right? And it could be like the girl in a bright red dress and, they'll, and by herself, and they'll be like, which one? And I'll be like, the girl in the red dress, the only girl walking away. Oh, you mean the blonde girl? Yes. Oh, uh, I'll do the next one, right? And then here's, here the guy is paying several thousand dollars, okay? And I'm like being very firm on him. 
And even still, with me being firm and having made a big monetary investment, it's still easy to just think, I'll do the next one, okay? And this, and this is true with all, all sorts of things in life, okay? I'll go to the gym tomorrow, or I'll, uh, I'll work on building my business tomorrow. I'll, I'll take better care of my, my diet tomorrow. Right now, I'm gonna eat this shit food. And that becomes a habitual pattern, okay? And before you know it, the next girl comes along and you have the same rationale. Okay, and that's the easy way. That's the easy way out. Oh, you know, I can, I can protect my ego, etc. I can't tell you the amount of times that I personally and for my clients and just knowing guys and that are talking to strangers a lot or not even a lot, where the guys were terrified, and this happened to me plenty of times too, terrified to make that approach. They did it and surprise, surprise, not only did they get to go on a date and sleep with that girl, but that girl stuck around for months or even years in some cases. Okay, and you can look back and be like, wow, if I had pussied out, I would have missed out on all these amazing experiences with that girl, okay? So I'll leave you with that. I don't wanna keep belaboring the same points, but just think of it that way, okay? You have a 0% chance, literally 0% chance, if you fail to approach and you let that you know, fear and these negative things win.